Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You can listen to The Mike O'Mara Show at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Let's get started. It's The Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara, Oscar Santana, and Rob Spiewak. Now, here's Mike. Happy Tuesday, everybody from Southwest Florida, also Leesburg, Virginia, and uh, now the great state of Maryland, uh, where the Podville move has been completed. However, we will have a major story of uh, danger uh, as soon as Oscar gets here. He's running late because he's in a uh, traffic jam, something he hasn't experienced for quite some time, but I guess he should That's probably... That's true. Mac, I suppose uh, he should grow accustomed to it uh, with the highways and byways, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Two main slabs we got to go through to get here, 495 and 270. Uh, 270. <laughs> Mac, that was very uh, sort of Channel 4 traffic guy of you, the way you said that. <laughs> you. Said, yeah, two main slogs we got to get by, the Beltway and, of course, the Technology Corridor 270. I'm not sure that uh, D.C. holds the exclusive uh, rights on the traffic situation based on my experiences down here in oh, southwest that's true. Florida. That's uh, true. It's been, it's, it's been weird down here. I mean, but do you I, have a I puking have traffic guy to tell you about it? I don't. I got a guy uh, that I look at down. That I look at. God, can I be any more <laughs> you look at elderly? Television, do you? I'm looking at the television. <laughs> He's looking. Jesus, what's wrong with me? What is wrong with me? Oh, uh, I forgot what his name is. I remembered it. He wears, um, you know, the dress shoes that are like. Well, Nike started with them where they're dress shoes, but they're like they have the sneaker bottom with yes. the white. Uh, yeah. He wears those every day, and it bo- for some reason it bothers my wife, but I'm not quite sure why. Does it bother um, you? No, no. Uh, he's he's a better traffic guy than he is a weather guy. But with ways, <laughs> uh, you know, I don't need them. I just right. uh, pop in my ways, and uh, are you and there as addicted to ways as I am? I I have to have it. I I, I guess that would mean that I'm totally addicted to it. I but I will sometimes yeah. use it for things that I know exactly where I'm going. Well, no, I always use it for places I know exactly where I'm going. I don't use it for directions. I use it for traffic. Yeah, it does Traffic management exclusively. And, uh, oh, my God, God, God. It was simply, uh, oh, there he is. He's right here. here. Good. We'll get to uh, Oscar. We'll get to Oscar right away uh, since we're lucky to have him alive. (laughs) Uh, Oscar, you didn't miss much. We just started. uh, And Thank uh, you. Thank you. Getting back to the whole traffic situation. Yeah. Um, the ways I, I had all the technology and all the information that I could have possibly wanted and just chose because of pure impatience yes. of not wanting to get on an exit ramp to go the alternate route. And the alternate route was doggy poo. And I've uh, done it and you try I, to outguess ways and you can't do it. it. You don't, you just go with, you know, you go with what, what you got, but, right. um, the discussion yesterday as far as um, where we originate our show from, the Mike O'Mara show from Podville Media, Podville Media going o- through a massive move uh, from downtown D.C. to uh, some locations in downtown, but primarily the headquarters mo- moving out to the suburbs of Maryland. And Seven it's Locks been- Road. Seven Locks Road, mm. and it has been um, it's been a lengthy move and a lot of moving parts and – uh, one of the issues is the movers that move corporate entities can't get into these buildings and don't do the move until overnight because they have to wait till the close of business day right. so that business will not be interfered with. With uh, although the building's empty, so they probably could have gotten away with it at your well, building. Well, the, uh, the building where we were, yes. Yeah. Uh, so they're doing it overnight and uh, Mac just reported that everything has uh, safely been transported to the new location but it's at here. approximately <laughs> it was I, don't mean I to would laugh. say no no you mustn't laugh it was a uh, uh, it was a morning fraught with urgent uh, communication right um, so let's go to uh, 6 the videotape 6 <laughs> yeah and uh, I don't know if Mac can play the video you probably not uh, I have at, the audio at six. Um, what time? Six twenty-five. Yeah. All right. So this is the text that I get from uh, Oscar. Movers wrapped at five thirty a.m. Uh, hurried. I hurried back to M Street uh, to pull the network gear 
that Mac had requested. Now the elevator is jammed. Uh, if I don't make it, tell everyone my story. I loved, I laughed, I died. You know, well, he wanted to say freight elevator, but it turned out to be a freight elevator. The guy's in trapped in an elevator. I don't expect spelling. He died in a freight elevator because of Mac. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, so, some background here. Um, I was I haven't slept since yesterday, so. Just run, you, you running. Should, on, you should force yourself running on caffeine. Um, okay. And are you going to be there that, all day today? No, I'm going home after this. Why don't you go, go home? Sleepy after, time. Tell your tell your story, and, yeah. and then go home and get some Thank rest. You. I'm Thank worried you. about your health. That. And me too. Me too. Just me too. tell the open up the the. All we need you yeah. for is is that I want to hear Thank about you. what happened. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then we'll send you away. Matt, you can pull the video and play it for our audience. Did you did you not receive it? I received it, but I can't get audio onto onto this. I can play the video, why? but I can't play the audio because it's not set up for that yet. Yeah, what? Well, can't you just play it like from you on the, your computer? You don't have a camera yet. Oh, I can do that. Yeah, I can yeah. play it from my camera to the. This is America. The, um, okay. Yeah. Yes. Give me a sec. Thank you. Uh, I, it's we're developing back, a back. culture. We're back. It's developing back. a culture where no isn't the first answer. Yeah, can exactly. Do. Can do. Can do. Can, can do. do. So um, the, the movers arrive, and this is what's wild. We did some serious work prior to them coming where I was like, they're just going to need two trucks, not three trucks. Two trucks, no big deal. Done. And what we moved were the sensitive, the sensitive equipment. That they were like, okay. If you do that, then this should be pretty quick, just furniture and set set pieces, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, and they arrive at three o'clock. Um, yesterday. We can start. We, yeah, we can start yesterday. They can start lo- uh, staging on the loading dock at 6 p.m. where they lock out the freight elevator. By lockout, they just basically allow us to move in it back and forth. And the rest of the building doesn't have access to it, which is great. Right. Okay. And, but they stage a lot. They're packing their professionals. We get pizza, we get uh, Gatorades, like we're being great hosts and everybody's moving. I cycle the team here around 7 p.m. That's uh, Rob, uh, Shannon, um, uh, Dan, O'Brien, Max. So they all come here and I'm still there. I'm thinking we're going to be done and over there in a couple hours and moving so fast. I call Shannon around 10 p.m. Oh, no, I'm sorry, 9.30 p.m. I said, can you send the team home? These guys, these guys will not be, we're not, we won't arrive there till roughly 1 a.m. And what was the change that you were ahead of the schedule? The freight elevator was acting up. Oh, okay. Now, Mike, yeah. you should know at the, uh, at the M Street location that we're exiting, there are three elevators. And one, the one on the far right, as you look at it, is the freight elevator. But as you know, the elevators have been being renovated since 1958 and so there's always something going on with these elevators they're not what i would call the regular elevators and the freight elevator all of them they're not yes. reliable they're not reliable. it's always been something right yeah exactly. and i wasn't even quantifying this i'm like well maybe it's a heavy load. it didn't matter fine bit the bullet uh sent shannon home uh the guy the movers finally show up here one, around 1 45 a.m three big trucks loading dock it's five i said guys when you come in you just have to Go in and drop it. Like, you're not going to have to build anything, right. no rebuilding furniture, and you just drop it and go. I'm also, logically, Mike, we're also, you know, you're on a clock, so these hours over time, yeah. they add up. Yes. That's why they're these, taking the time. These guys didn't wrap up, and they were really nice and thorough and thoughtful, but around 4.30 a.m., I'm like, guys, we have people coming in, the building... Like they said, there's there's a bunch of medical spaces around here. Like they get going. This has got to be done now. So when they were done, uh, around five, you know, we went our separate ways. And I remembered Mac the night before saying, like, do you like I forgot 
but can you please? And I said, I'll make sure to get it, man. Thinking that like I would be able to run there in the morning after getting at least four to five hours of sleep. Sure. But, but I felt like it was critical for this. So I race over to M street in the big van down by the river and the sprinter, by the river, the sprinter. Yes. And Great van. I get in the elevator to go upstairs and I hear, burr, burr. and I said, Oh, come on. No way. Like I've never, I have never been trapped in an ele- elevator in my life for some period of time. I, that, you know, I think whether you're claustrophobic or not, it would be a freaky feeling. I've well, never had is, the pleasure. This is the bit. Um, so we start, we start, I hit the button again, I get the fob and then it drops half a flight. Like with immense speed? Yeah. Like a free fall? Oh no. Yeah, like, like, a, like a cable like clicked or something. There was like a, a misstep in a, in a, I don't know what it was, but I felt my like, whoosh, like when you're. Let me ask when you, you this: a speed bump. Yes. Do you do you think due to the move and equipment being brought on and off that that might have contributed to, uh, contributed uh, to the problems with this the is, elevator? No, this elevator has been like you know, it has been mercurial in the past, so much so that we had an employee that would only take the stairs. The Mercurial Elevator. It sounds like a novel. I love lots it. of highs, lots of lows. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but but it is. Yeah. It's inconsistent. It very much mm-hmm. is. But I mean, the I I thought trapped is one thing, but shifting down where you know, yeah, you're on the I, fourth floor. That could probably hurt you pretty bad. Well, the thing I is, went, the elevator modern elevators are designed. They can't do the full drop. They'll they catch. they, they they'll lock. Catch. They do. They catch. But the fact that you fell half a flight. Is Weird. very scary and enough to upset from the greatly. fourth, right? So yeah, now yeah. I'm on three and a half. That's like a Harry and Potter this, floor. And this is before before I sent you guys the video. Um, you were very, feeling, you were remarkably composed in the video. I should yeah, say that. I agree. Well, I mean, at that point, I'm just like, well, if this is how I'm going to go, <laughs> at least it's worth telling a story, you know? Sure, um, it is ready if you want to see it. Please, but oh, so let, before we get there, by the time we got here, I've been on this elevator for almost twenty minutes. Because I didn't want to film the video. I called the security people. I called Data Watch, who does our fobs. I was like, hey, like, I'm lieutenant. I'm stuck on the elevator. Like, oh, we'll get somebody. But nothing was happening. And so then, then I filmed this video. Go ahead. You can try it up a little bit. The audience will hear the real video. Yes. So we'll make the, sure that that the real audio. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you you see you you'll see the you see the yeah. fact that I'm I'm talking to you guys and I, I like and I got my drill to take the rock servers out. You know what? Actually, just let Mac run the video. I can run the audio clean from here. Okay. Go ahead. So here we go. So I'll kill that audio, Mac. Start and it again. Okay. And here's Oscar in the elevator. All right. This is me. Just trying to go downstairs. We're on four, this death trap, right? I'm gonna go ahead and hit one, one, one. Nothing happens. It's absolutely. It lights dead. up. Nothing happens. Put my war gloves down here and my my trusty drill for the rack. Now I'm gonna go up. Four, four. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. One. Nothing happens. It's hot in here. We're Jesus burned. Christ. Now it's time to hit this thing. Watch. The alarm. <laughs> well, I just made it all about me. All right, all right stop it right there. Okay. <laughs> what, when you said you just made it all about you, yeah, yeah. Uh, what that you, that you're calling for help because you're trapped in an elevator? What? Why would that? I'm be? I'm calling for help in an empty building. I th- what I interpreted as Oscar is that up to that point you were making laser focused calls to individuals that can help you, and by yeah. ringing the bell, you're essentially just going, "Help!" That I do it. That was that was anybody that was would the do level, it. That was the level of like. Oh my God, none of these people 
care. That are in <laughs> Sri Lanka. Anybody would do it, Oscar. Anybody would do it. I mean, uh, Rob, yes. wax poetic, if you will. Okay. About our boy, Mr. Santana, and what you referred to years ago as the struggle. Yeah. That he loves the struggle. He, he does. seems to not look for it, and I'm sure he would have preferred not to be trapped in an elevator, but struggle is this man's middle name. Is I that correct? I think that the, the struggle boiled to the top of the pot faster this time because he's going on no sleep. And the freight yeah. elevator yeah. has nothing to do with the struggle. What has to do with the struggle <laughs> is the handling I, of being stuck. <laughs> is No, when I saw him put down the drill. <laughs> he has gone to business school. He has yes. started this company with Charlie Bernie, and he has uh, the title of Chief Executive Officer of yeah. Podville Media. Yeah. You saw correct, yesterday correct. the size of the operation. It is yeah. a significant operation with a very nice corporate value, and this man should be sitting in an office making phone calls and not staying up after having a stroke in the middle of the night, but he thrives Yes, oh, on the struggle. No, no, no. No, you're no. not even I, aware of it, Oscar. I, you're not I, even aware of your own your guys, your, your desire guys, for struggle. Guys, guys, guys. Let me if how do I how am I how am I gonna be thoughtful about this without completely destroying uh any individual? If I Duck thought, Mac <laughs> No, if I if anybody else would have been like, Hey, you go home, Tio Oscar, I'll be here, we're good. If anybody had peeped or said a word, I would have taken them up in a heartbeat. Like I just did with going home for the show. Yes. Okay, oh, so why didn't... We're going to need you I mean, to stay for the first You're the boss, spot, though, man. Yeah. I mean, aren't you? Are, are you the... I mean... I know, so are, do you, but I do you, also, Is this a guilt thing that you're, you feel like if you don't... I feel guilty. But I got to get over it. You do, it's because it's going to be yeah. it's it's your health now. And it's I think kill you ought to kill uh, take care of your health. Do you want to hear the last 20 seconds of the struggle? Now? Yeah, go ahead. Please, please. 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 Well, I just made it all about me. <laughs> right now. Oh, Jesus Christ. <sighs> Second ringy dingy. I tried. Wow. Mac, you burned me. And Mike, if for if for those of you who are just joining us, I have a highlight reel of that tape. I've condensed it to the best parts. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's great audio. I didn't realize it was loud and it was loud. That's and oh, the elevator bell is a loud. Oh, they all. Uh, <laughs> so uh, technically, the actual. Physical move. Oh, uh, one last question about. Uh, although I don't have a dog in the fight. Did you, so you want to know how I got out? Oh, how did you get out? Yes, absolutely. Because. I forgot that part. So I. <laughs> You're here. I assume you did. <laughs> I called security. They called the fire the fire department. Oh, no. yeah. And the phone rang. Yeah. Oh, there's no phone in this thing. There's nothing. No, there's an there's alarm. no panel with the phone. There's no phone inside the elevator. That's, That's a, a lackluster elevator. No, thing. no, no. A, a freight elevator probably modern, doesn't have it. Modern. Mm. Uh, probably it's the I, it's the passenger elevator that has the phone the thank you you're absolutely right because that's probably where i was like there's no even phone it's supposed to be the worst they, <laughs> no wonder if, you're, we're if you're a mover you're left to die <laughs> yes uh <laughs> and it was all hot. the time <laughs> it was very hot air-conditioned elevators they are not um the fire department arrives and they say sir we're here to help you um how do you feel? And I said, I'm hot and I'm bothered. And they said, sir, take a seat, relax. This may be a while. And then we're going to reset the elevator. So they reset the elevator. Unplug shuts, it and plug it back in. <laughs> everything shuts down. The power goes out. Like it was, I was like, oh, this is surreal. It's like a breaker. Um, yeah. yeah. It boots back up. And then the doors go, bop, 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 bop. They start hitting, like, but they're not opening. They reset the elevator again. It shoots to the first floor, and then I can hear someone else because now they're not on the fourth floor. They're on the first floor. Is this it's, the angel you referred to? This is the angel that talked me through this, and they okay. said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to try to reset the elevator a handful of times. If it doesn't work, you're going to count three times. 
If it doesn't work on the third time, the fourth time we're going to pry the doors open. Okay. That may uh, damage the elevator, but we're going to get you out. I said, so as long as you gave me a plan and an exit, I was good. Right. So I sat down and I backed up from the door and sure as that's the, the third time happened and nothing opened up. It was the same old song. I was, I was trapped. And then he, they took crowbars and opened up the elevator. And wow. that was it. You got it. And now that was it. Got me out. I have to say, though, uh, when you make a move uh, of a, uh, a corporate move like you've made, you're going from one place that was home to another. I would imagine all this served to do, really, when you get through the struggle and you get through all the hard, yeah. you finally right, said right. to yourself, this was this was this was the supreme being telling you that the move was the right thing to do. Because yeah, what, a, what a way to say goodbye to M Street. Oh my God! Uh, yeah. By saying so yeah. long, suckers. I don't yeah. have to deal yeah. with this crap anymore. What floor are you on in uh, in, in top? Seven this is lots? a three three story building, so we're on okay. top floor. How's the elevator yeah. work? Wonderful. Okay. No problem. The good no news is, problem. is the uh, M Street elevator. There was a little bit of cosmetic and mechanical damage done to the door of elevator three, and they will have that repaired by twenty thirty. <laughs> Okay, you know enough about the uh, facility uh, <laughs> over there. Uh, now, uh, before we let you go, and we are going to let you go and get some Thank sleep, you. I have to I'm say, uh, Mac, it sounds to me yes. that uh, the primary reason yes. that Mr. Santana was in a freight elevator in the middle of Washington, D.C., two hours <laughs> two hours before this show yes. Yes. was because of you. I was the one that thought about the thing that someone else missed. Who missed? Oh. Matthew. Because we forgot the we forgot some networking equipment that I thought about at the very last minute. It's like, don't we need to bring that here? Is this uh does this last initial of the one you're referring to begin with a B? No comment. Uh, yeah, and at this point, Mac, you're in charge, right? You're yeah, the Mac. So it's, that it's was your, a, it's your deal. Although uh, I your applaud, deal. I applaud your, your NFL style juke left there. Yeah, yeah. To, it's, it's, to... it's it's your deal. I I'd love to throw a bloom under the bus. It has nothing to do with them. This is your deal. Okay, I offered to help, but yeah, you you called me this morning and <laughs> said, "What are you doing?" And I said. Did you see my text? What? He called and said, what are you doing? Yes, I was stuck in Did the I? elevator. Oh, yes. okay. All right, hold on a sec. Now, now I'm involved. Now I will make it yeah. about this show. Yeah. Mac. Yeah, oh, yeah. Hold on. Let me just yeah. finish. Yeah. Mac. Yes. Um, the three principles of this show and whoever is assisting us, whatever stray puppy is assisting us, putting that show out every day. Uh, mm -hmm. that uh, that I've inherited from Podville because uh, the Mike O'Mara show can't sell enough hats to uh, you know have our own guy in there. I have to say this to you. We communicate, Mr. McIntosh, primarily and very efficiently, I might add, by text message. That's how the three of us know what's going on. Uh, there's not right a day in. in the last 150 days I haven't received a text during the business week from one of the guys yeah. about something correct, correct. Mm -hmm. every correct. day. Anything. I, I have to ask your style of, uh, of text messaging and receiving. What, why are you not more prompt with that? What do you mean? You don't respond to text respond. messages. You're, I, you're a green, you're a green bubble guy. I always feel like maybe you yeah. didn't get the text. Is, I thought that was the other guy that was still with. No, it's not. No, he's a, he's, he's the green have. bubble guy. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, still have a green, green bubble guy. Yeah, that's me. Oh, he's a green bubble guy. Can we so my question you, is: if, if we purchase you an iPhone, would you become an? I iPhone will throw guy? it in the trash. You would throw the iPhone in the trash. I do not like iPhones. I don't like iPhones. Well, what about oh getting God. back to the text message thing? I Hello? saw his text message, and then I called him because I it the text message woke me up, and I tried to see if I could help him with the elevator. Rob, wasn't there an incident was the like other a, day where we were trying to get Mac on a on a yeah, message? Yeah, it was yesterday. It was yesterday. Yeah, thank you. So, Mac, you're laying in your canopy bed, and <laughs> it woke you up. I'm so sorry. Yeah, and and what is your text alert? Is it like 
La 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 la. No, it's actually uh, <laughs> the Mario coin. I have my phone on silent most of the day. I get my text uh, via vibration, you know, with that. <laughs> I love that he has Mario Kart. Phone. Yeah. Coin. I, I don't even silence my phone at night in case something oh my goes God. down. I know what happened yesterday. I messed up. Mike, we talked about this in the past. Don't get happy. I said the nicest thing to Mac while we were <laughs> oh, in the van together. no. Oh, my God. I jinxed it. Mac, what did I say to you? Uh, something to the effects of you're real, you're you're great team member. You, uh, I'm like a, a I don't want to feel like a, a father, but I feel like a father to you. Something something along those lines. I said, I this is exactly what I said. And by the way, this is the last time I ever say anything to you because I said something such was so thoughtful. I felt awkward. I said, Matt, yeah. you in the past three months, you have really stepped it up and you have grown into a young professional. Always something that most. I don't, I don't know. You show that side to people most of the time, but I always believed in you and I, and I'm not your dad, but I'm very proud of the way that you're growing <laughs> within the role here. And you could have like, it's like I at, like I spat in his face. It was just quiet. And I said, okay, that was awkward. Maybe I went too far was, and don't get happy. Like, please, for the love of God, do not let this go to your head. And now this, yeah. uh, Mac. So, um, yeah, did that feel good? Even though you're not able to acknowledge it, did that feel good when he said that? It did that? feel good. I, I'm terrible at taking compliments because I don't know how to respond to them. Well, you're also uh, not yeah, very I, I accustomed did, did. to it. <laughs> That's true. No, but uh, I did appreciate it. I really did. I needed to hear that right there. You know, yeah. I have one for you, too, And uh, since it's been a tough morning for you. Uh, What's that, Mike? I really appreciate you coming in every day, bud. Thank you. All right, so moving right along, um, <laughs> the, uh, the, 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 the move is complete. Yes, we're done. Um, happy for you. Uh, Thank I want you. you to go home Thank and get you. some rest. I mean, a lot yes. of rest. Is your uh, bride at home uh, sawing wood right now, or is she? No, I just know, saw she, her walk she, by she, with she, the dog. Yeah, she, she drove. She drove me to, to work because she's like, it's not safe for you to drive. She will All pick right. me up later. She went down to the DC campus. Hey, you know what? I'm not one to dredge up the past, but apparently, on her scale, it's safe for you to drive when you're having a stroke. But it's not safe to drive when you're so sleepy. True. So true. So true. <laughs> so true. All right. Go get some rest. We'll wrap Thank up you. things here. And yes. uh, we God will bless. see you tomorrow. Thank, Thank you, guys. you very much. We'll talk and, soon. Uh, Thank you very much. I Thank you, darling. Uh, ciao, ciao. That's uh, Oscar Santana uh, logging out. And uh, it's an interesting time. It These are is. interesting times. And, and, we and I have interesting to say times. something. I know you, and you are uh, most definitely a team player, Rob. And Thank you. I, uh, but Here I also know that you do – no, no, no. You do things that you want to do. And I have a theory that you are in love with the TMOS hat. You, you love that I hat. I love the hat. I is really the, do. And it's the sizing, correct? It, it, that's exactly it. I didn't even adjust Flex fit the ad with the adjustability. I took this is out of the package on my head, nothing to it. And my son, who doesn't spare a lot of compliments to me, mm -hmm. said, Dad, that's an awesome hat. I yeah. love the hat. And yeah. then I don't want to tip our hand, came up with a great idea. Yeah, and we're working on it right now, uh, the next item uh, that uh, moved up the hip parade. We had a thought, Carla and I, about uh, the store. And uh, because of Rob's input, we're working on something right now that we think people are going to really dig. Uh, it's for summertime fun. Yeah, and, it's uh, very it's, cool. It's nothing elaborate, but it's going to be something we think you're going to really, really dig. So we're, we're super psyched about that. Speaking of him, can I mention the celebrity he met? Because it's a pretty funny story. How well, both of out. you have met celebrities recently, correct? Well, yeah, but I mean, this was more about him. I got okay. sucked into the picture, but right. um, Ralph Rice, who is a good guy and has hooked us up billions of times with good stuff, uh, he works for the Capitals, and he actually was in touch with Kerry. He reached out to Kerry last week, and Great he guy. said, oh, the best. And he said, is your son going to be home anytime in the near future? And she said, yeah, he'll be home for Easter. He says, that's perfect. The Caps are having uh, an open practice on Saturday morning at what used to be called, uh, it used to be Kettler, but now it's the MedStar. Kettler Star. Ice Complex. What's yeah. it called now? MedStar, Capitals Ice Plex. And it's MedStar, in, what do they, fly uh, helicopters <laughs> in and do trauma surgery on the uh, second floor no, there? They just what? they just accept the check, I believe. Oh, okay. um, but right, MedStar's good. good people. They've looked at my liver. so uh, yeah, they, good. And it was an invitation type deal. And so we get there, and Robert's just excited to see the team up close because the bleachers, 
at this. We've played at this ice arena. I love they that only place. Go, they only go up about eight levels. Yeah, it's it's like it looks like a small college gym. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, small college arena for uh, professional. And they've got two ho- ranks there. I don't they've know got what two I'm ranks, and about. we go. We went yeah. to the primary rink, and before we even got a seat, I hear Ralph go, "Rob, Rob." And I say, okay, and I come on down. And we were just excited to be at this practice. And, of course, we're wearing our jerseys because we're team people. And he pulls us right away behind the black curtain to the other side of the rink. So we are right against the plexiglass. And they're taking uh, practice shots at the goal. And apparently it's a thing that the players will occasionally hit a puck at the plexiglass to scare yeah. you. Yeah, and it was absolutely. just, it was, and Robert's having a blast. And then we, uh, we Super see, cool. we see Ovi's kids walk by, which is really cool. They're adorable. Did you know that right away that uh, they were Ovi's kids? Rice told us, Ralph told us. And okay. then right. he said, Hey, Robert, I want to show you something. And Robert's head is just spinning because he loves the cap. So Ralph, I didn't know, him, I didn't know he was a turbo hockey oh, fan. He loves it. And so Ralph takes him back to where the team sits and the door is for the ice. And he shows him where they work out. You mean out. the bench? Yeah, the bench, but the door that they, you know, the opening thing that goes out to the ice, right? Yes. There's like an, a, a, a swinging door. So on that swinging door, it's key to the story. But there is first, nothing I appreciate more than you playing, t- telling a sports story. If I, I, I mean, I, I think I, I think I'm, doing I'm getting my a best, picture. Mike. I'm doing Are my you best. talking about? The bench, uh, the the door that goes that opens onto the ice from the bench, from the bench. Exactly. Okay. So he takes him there. So you're and, walking up the bench no, line and standing at the door. I'm not doing that. I'm staying in the back corner with Carrie. Ralph just took Robert, and so Robert right up is, to the be- right up to yeah, the door of the bench. And Robert's wearing his jersey, and he's his eyes are like moon, like moons. He's so excited. Because when he gets to that that part of the bench, leaning on the door is Alex Ovechkin, like six feet eight. away from him. The great and he eight, really One of like the greatest uh, hockey players in the history of, of the NHL. Time. And so he goes through and he sees him. He says, "Dad, my my heart was pumping. It was so weird to be so close to him." <laughs> and then he shows him the workout room and the locker room and all that stuff behind there. And he brings him back. And Robert's just like, "Dad, I had no idea we were going to see that." I said. Pretty good day so far. I said I thought we were going to get to see him practice. That's, That's so it. Not, did it? Were there any words exchanged with Ovi at all? Well, as soon as practice is winding up and they're picking up the pucks, Ralph says, "Come with me," and he takes me and Carrie and Robert to the lobby of the Iceplex. Right, and there's like a, a, a receiving desk and chairs, and there's no one there because it's a Saturday and it's essentially closed. But right outside. The big glass window for the lobby is an area that they've cordoned off that says uh, autograph area. Oh, and okay. sometimes players go out and get autographs. But we're not there. We're sitting inside. And Carrie and Robert are both wearing TJ Oshie jerseys. Because okay. uh, Robert likes Oshie, but Carrie has had a longstanding crush on okay. TJ Oshie. Is TJ still playing for the Caps? Yes. As a matter of fact, he is. Awesome. So Ralph says, sit here a second. I'm going to try something. And Ralph comes out, and I'll never forget this. He says, uh, just stick here. Ralph is eating a salad. <laughs> he comes out of the locker Good for room. him. Way to go, Fried. He's lost a lot of weight, but he's eating a salad. That's and then good. about 30 seconds behind him, TJ Oshie comes out. And he comes up to us, and he says, hi, I'm TJ. <laughs> Like we don't know. This. Well, that's the way they do it. That's hum. It's humility. It uh, everybody so, doesn't know. So cool. And he signs Carrie's TJ jersey. He signs Robert's TJ jersey. He poses for pictures. He couldn't be nicer. He says, "You come to the game tonight." Robert says, "I can't make it. I've got homework to do." He says, "Talk to Rice. He'll probably get you a room, and you can do homework at the Capital One Arena." <laughs> That's awesome. And so That's he so was cool. as That's fun great. and charming as can be. And, you know, he gives us like, you know, a minute and a half, which is amazing. That's wonderful. And he walks away and uh, Carrie looks at me and says, I think he liked me. I said, <laughs> OK, I'm sure he did. <laughs> and so, Rob, I'm leaving you. <laughs> so then he comes, he goes back. And apparently this is a, a P.S. I got a call from Ralph yesterday. TJ said. <laughs> You bring me out to meet fans, and you're eating an effing salad? What's the matter with you? <laughs> when he took the picture, he literally had a Caesar salad in his left hand and my camera in the right. 
And so he comes back, and we are over the moon. It's so exciting. We had no idea we were going to meet anybody. We had no idea we were going to get an autograph and a picture. And that's when Ralph says, uh, one more thing before you go, I want you to go into the conference room. Because remember, we're in full view of all the fans that are waiting for stuff. Yeah. So the fans saw Oshi come out, talk to us, and then right. go back into the locker room. So we go into this conference room, beautiful corporate style car with a long table, all of the great headlines from the post and all the papers that are framed of great Caps moments. It's just a really elegant conference room. And he says, uh, Robert, uh, you might want to change jerseys with your dad. Because my is a number eight. It's a Ovechkin jersey. And he said, okay. He said, but my dad can't wear my jersey. I said, I know. It's too small. But so we swapped jerseys out. And he says, I want you to wait here. This is not something we can do out there because the, the fans will go crazy. But swap those jerseys out. And he says, now listen. Ovi doesn't like to sign for grownups. So you wear that jersey. And that way he'll be more inclined to be kind to you or nice to you. And, and, and so he said, OK. I get it. And so what he doesn't realize is that my boy, the youngster, is 21 years old and three inches taller than Ovi. So, so we're waiting there. And then it happens. But he, because, he still looks like a kid. He yeah, still looks he like does. And the thing that was so cool about this is until Ralph took us from the conference room to the little lobby to the locker room we had no idea this was going to happen so he walks all three of us and standing in this little lobby maybe eight feet by eight feet is alex ovechkin and robert the greatest is player in the capitals franchise i, I mean in the history and robert and i were talking about it he says you know in years that's going to be like meeting lou gehrig or yeah. muhammad ali yeah, that's Wayne a Gretzky. guy yeah the, that's the a greatest guy that, hockey players gordy howe he's in that the, the, that league and so we go in, and I think this is the moment that Ralph realizes that Robert doesn't look like a little kid. And so Robert's the first one in, and he says, Hey, Ovi, this is Rob Jr. <laughs> <laughs> to guarantee you'll get to the To guarantee he knows. Yeah, and then Carrie, and he says, This is Carrie, and this is his dad, Rob. And he smiled at us, and he didn't chat much because he doesn't, he's not a talker, but he was so enthusiastic to take a picture, ready to sign that jersey, and just to smile at us and, and you know, just be so that's cool a lot, about it. That's a lot of effort on the part of Fried. Uh, he with is his so job. great. Look, Fried's been a, a valued member of that team. He's got yes. a ring. He has. Uh, he's been incredibly kind to uh, everybody on the show, and I'm. I I know I speak for all the Speedwax when I say, uh, Ralph, you did it. You outdid yourself. I mean, that I mean, had to be spectacular. Incredible. Now, a quick post. A uh, uh, quick postscript to the story is we after that. I mean, I still hadn't really computed what went on for another hour. Cause I it had was no idea so it was fast. this big a deal, Rob. This is fantastic. It was so cool, and so we thank Ralph. I think 17,000 times to a point where he's saying, shut up. It's what we do. Shut up. I don't want to hear it anymore. Yep. But, I mean, it doesn't happen without him. So my most sincere, bottom of my heart, thanks to Ralph. Because when your kid is 21, there are not many things you can do anymore that make you look like a cool dad. And right. the fact that we made that happen was awesome. So we're leaving. Uh, I said, Robert, now we got to go to Jimmy's. I got to meet my new friend that's going to the ELO concert. He says, meeting Ovi oh, and going to It's a pretty good little Saturday, huh? Pretty good little Saturday Amazing. for you? Well, well, don't get happy. Because right. uh, Robert says, meet Ovi and Oshi and go to Jimmy's. This is the best day ever. So we do that. We get our cheese steaks. And on our way home, Robert's car is in the driveway. And as we're pulling up, he says, is that a bunny under my car? I said, I don't know. And he gets out. And he looks under. He says, oh, Dad. I said, what? He says, a guy wasn't letting me exit last night on my way home from school, and I had to had to sort of last minute scooch over, and I hit a dead deer, and there's a hunk of deer caught in my undercarriage. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, well, just a little bit, right? He says, no, it's like his tail and some bones. Oh, God. Ew. I, said, I said, well, still best day ever. So we go to the car wash and get the undercarriage done. And we come back. And now it's still there, but it's clean. That's so nasty. So 
We pull it out to the, I back up to woods on my street. So I said, let's get it and throw it in the woods. That's uh, where it should be anyway. I'm going to throw up. Mike, this, this is, is the best part. This is where it's really great to be a dad. He backs his car up to the end of the street. We jack it up. He gets under there with two shovels and he puts his head under to see it. And he pulls his head back and looks at me and does a Hollywood comedy quality gag because it smells so bad. He oh said, my <laughs> God. Dear Carcass. Yeah. Carcass. Carcass. <laughs> and so he has to fool with it for like 10 minutes. In the time that he's doing it, my mom shows up. And she was dropping off uh, some stuff for Easter. And she walks to the end of the road and she says, what are you doing? And I said, Robert's under there getting a deer carcass. And she's got the same twisted sense of humor as I do. So she's watching and videotaping now. Oh and Robert God. is doing his best to hold down his cheesesteak because he's under a car with a deer carcass. He finally gets it, gets it on the shovel, and he's going to throw it into the woods. And it goes about six feet. It gets caught on a branch. And it's hanging? And it's just hanging there. Was it like the haunch or something like that? It looked to me like it was like the, if it was a car, the rear quarter panel. Oh, gross. Uh, so anyway, I said, Robert, I know that you've already done a lot of work, but please don't leave a deer carcass hanging in a tree in our neighborhood because it looks like we've had a seance. He says, yes, dad, you're right. So he pulls it down and throws it about 30 feet into the woods. And, uh, that was how the best day ever turned into the disposal of a dead deer. That's but disgusting. The takeaway is, thank you, Ralph Rice. What an amazing experience for my son. I can't thank you enough. And then, uh, you know, well, maybe later in the show, we can. You you did do the concert, correct? Well, no, I met the guy. The concert's not till September. Ah, all right. Then we don't. But I, I met the that. guy. Yeah, all yeah, right, that's so, good. Uh, well, that's wonderful, man. The yeah. great eight. How yeah. cool is that? So amazing. Very. And guy. Ralph is a uh, good guy. We will take a break, and we will come back with the round table. Uh, God, I mean, meeting legendary hockey players from the NHL, getting trapped on elevators. Do you need more? I think not. We'll be right back on the Michael Mary Show. This spring, get out there, enjoy the weather, and recapture the magic of riding a bike with an electric e-bike. With an amazing variety of models built for riders of all abilities, it's never been easier to fall in love with riding again. Plus, every electric e-bike ships free and only requires quick, toolless assembly. Electric e-bikes uh, start at just $7.99 with the XP Lite. Oscar loves it. You can ride it to the office and then ride it around the office, just like Mac did yesterday. You can save on gas, parking, and maintenance, and financing starts as low as $49 per month. Plus, data shows that e-bike riders take their bike out more often, meaning more exercise, exploration, and fresh air. Yes. Go full throttle into spring with electric e-bikes, the number one selling e-bikes in the nation. Get your adventure started, ladies and gentlemen, and do it today. And don't forget, it's electric ebikes.com and please mention that Mike O'Mara show sent you in the post checkout survey that's L E C T R I C ebikes.com Hey look the Kraken is. is eating a salad yeah and a little deer meat on the side which <laughs> oh, is uh, so gross always I very very exciting wish that you could have seen the gag that is nasty. Uh, <laughs> weird weird uh, round table today lots of just odd uh, not a mid-level celebrity stories. Primarily. My favorite. And My favorite. It, uh, but it'll end better than it begins. I, I start with Jared Leto. Uh, he briefly hosted last night's Wheel of Fortune. I don't know if anybody saw this, uh, but it was an April Fool's Day prank. Yes. Uh, he came out with Vanna White at the I beginning the of the episode. I have the audio if you want to visit it. Uh, yeah, because it's uh, it gives you the whole way. They they do it the whole way. It's yeah, funny. okay. Here All we right, go. go ahead. Just play the audio. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the stars of our show: Jared Leto and Vanna White. There they are. Listen to the energy when he starts the show. It's amazingly great, isn't Thank it? Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, have a great show. Have a great show. See you soon. All right, everybody, grab those devices. It's time to give away some money. Uh, $1,000 in our first toss-up. The category is on the map. April Fool's! <laughs> so, uh, there is the DJ music. Uh, when it was time to call the puzzle, Pat Zajac was back as, ho as host. 
Uh, Jared's appearance was never mentioned again, almost it's, like it, it never was happened. It was weird. Awkward. It was Very really awkward. awkward. And uh, I have to say that, you know, I went to middle school with Jared Leto. He's Did a McLean really, he's boy. A, he's a DC guy? He's a McLean boy, yeah. Really? And I think, uh, it's not really mentioned a lot, but when he made it big, he bought his house in McLean. We went to Haycock. No, not Haycock. Longfellow Intermediate together. I wow. have him in the yearbook. He didn't he's, know He's me. your age? Exactly my age, yeah. My God. And he's, we have the same haircut. He's held up a little better. Is that why you all <laughs> had that long hair for a period of time? Is that why? Yes, I wanted to be just like a fat Jared Leto. Jared Leto. What would Jared Leto? Uh, he's a, he's a Joker, right? Isn't Jared Leto a Joker in one of the movies? Did he play yeah. a Joker, Mac? I, I think don't, he did, I'm right? Not a, I'm not he a did on Suicide Squad. Suicide yes. Squad. No he one plays liked the Joker. it though. Well, he's uh, a he's also a he's a weirdo a little bit. He's little an odd weird. duck. Yeah, he uh, is. That's what my mom would say. He's an odd. Duck. Uh, Andrew Garfield's new girlfriend. Speaking of odd ducks, yeah, is a witch. And uh, does I'm a not, witch float? I'm not uh, name calling here. <laughs> The woman's name is Dr. Kate. I believe the pronunciation would be Tomas, T-O-M-A-S. Okay. Uh, and she calls herself a professional witch on her website. So, I hey, there's that pop. Could... There's that pop again, Mac. Did you hear that? I did. I don't mm -hmm. know where it's coming, coming from. from. Rob, did you touch something? I touched my iPad, but it's not hooked up to the electric. It's Rob's fault. Uh, the woman's name is Dr. Kate Tomas, and she calls herself a professional witch. On her website, she says she teaches a combination of ancient and modern spiritual practices and rituals and helps her students explore the world of energy, Student. <laughs> astrology, and spiritual practice. She even has a testimonial from Megan Mullally. That's who I get all my info from. On, uh, Smart what a lady. She has a testimonial, Megan Mullally, uh, on what a uh, great tarot reader she is. Jesus. I didn't know she had given up her amateur status. She's a professional witch? Yeah. I'm wow. surprised that uh, Andrew Garfield would date her because normally actors make good choices. That's right. <laughs> right. Right. I hear Andrew Garfield is hosting Wheel tonight. <laughs> uh, some guy on the internet wanted to know what percentage of the Earth's population had been within 10 feet of a cow. Uh, now, please, no interrupting, because I have to give you all the details for this of course. story. That's a lie. Actually, I just don't want you to steal my joke. Okay. Naturally, he asked in a Reddit forum named No Stupid Questions. Well, he started the post with, quote, I told my girlfriend that I've never been within 10 feet of a cow, and she said I was weird. If my significant other started a conversation off like that, I'd think they were weird, too. A lot of people laughed at how ridiculous the question was, but then some agreed that they'd only ever seen cows in a field while driving by. So to settle the debate, they all convinced him to start a poll. The poll had one simple question. Have you ever been within 10 feet of a cow? And hmm. then it was edited to add that he meant, quote, live cows. Beef doesn't count. The final results were 11,000 yes and 1,200 no. So 11,000 people have been within 10 feet of a cow. That is 92.2%. I'm sorry, that is 90.2% of people that say they've been super close to a cow before. Most were surprised by the answer, especially from Redditors of all people who uh, might not get as much daily sunlight as recommended. <laughs> Just amazing they'd all be out there in the uh, in the field next to a cow. Uh, at American <laughs> University, I know a lot of guys who got really close to some cows. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. That, I want to tell you. Do you remember to... that uh, this is an old-time reference for us, yes. but on our first uh, road trip video, I yelled at every cow we saw. On I the road. That. Yeah. But uh, have you ever been within 10 feet of a cow? I grew up in a farm area. I mean, I, I was in a suburb that was more rural than suburbs. Okay. So at the Grange Fair, uh, you know, everything was always livestock, always oxen and cattle and stuff like that. You know? I have milked a cow. I am not sure. I might have had the opportunity and not, I don't, it may be, but I'm not 100% sure. And okay. uh, was it, uh, were you successful at milking a cow? I wasn't because it turned out it was male. <laughs> Bada bing. But I knew when I was done. <laughs>
<laughs> that is so. Hey, Mac, are you disgusted by that joke? No, that was great. Thank you. It was great. <laughs> I it love, was, I love getting the round table. That's a ra- That's like a rave from Mike McIntosh. <laughs> that right is. There. I'll that take it. That is special. It. I love that. <laughs> uh, according to experts, here are the nine germiest spots on your office. I'm not going to read the explanations. Door okay. handles number one. Uh, your keyboard number two, your desk number three, four, the shared microwave and fridge. That's Gross. nasty. Gross with God. the microwave. The fridge is very clean at Podville, but the microwave. Not at WJFK. Oh, God. Oh. Wasn't that horrible? I remember that the freezer actually had so much frost in it, it froze itself stuck. So gross. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> and food items that were just oh. left. Art uh, Baker's Chinese food. Yeah, this oh, new office so has nasty. doppel microwave. Ooh, doppel microwave. Is that a big deal, Mac, for you? Yeah, I I, I do my microwave meals every so often. That's good. Very exciting. You know what you, you could have now is microwave races. By the way, are you closer to work now? Uh, it's further, but a quicker drive. Okay, that's good. Uh, number five, the, the water cooler. Uh, number six, the bathroom. Seven elevator buttons. Well, we got a guy oh, that just Oscar. left that's touched that's a few sad. of those. Yeah, yeah. Number eight is vending machines. That's so gross. Now I think of vending machines in every capacity. Nasty. And uh, number nine, here it is again. Always on these lists, by the way, people. Clean what? it if you get a chance. Your phone. Your yeah. phone is numero uno mm-hmm. with this. That's the way that goes. I can't. Uh, you know what? The vending machine, are they talking about like the buttons or like the, stuff you, get, the stuff you get out of it? The vending machine would be probably anything you press. Not a, you know the stuff that's behind. Although I mean, it's just a guy opening a box with his little dick beaters, and uh, you know, and he's, do you know? He's, I've he's mentioned this before <laughs> that uh, the chief engineer at WYSP in Philadelphia wanted a raise, and they wouldn't give it to him. But they let him stock and collect the money from the vending machines That's sad. instead of a raise. That's Radio 101 right CBS. there. CBS. It? It's like giving somebody a new business card. But look at your title. Congratulations. <laughs> Isn't that great? Finally today, the periodical cicadas that are about to infest two parts of the United States aren't uh, just plentiful. They're downright weird. I don't know how much uh, cicada news you know. We talk about them. We talk about how long they're underground, when they come out, what part of the country is going to have a lot, what part of the country is not going to have a lot. The last time, they totally blew it, and I think they're going to blow it again because any place there's been construction in the last 17 years, the cicadas have been disrupted. Well, let me tell you why I've changed my opinion and now put cicadas uh, almost at the top of my hip parade as far as wildlife. The insects are the strongest urinators in the animal kingdom. There you go. Uh, That's a category. (laughs) With flows that put humans and elephants to shame. And I've seen an elephant pee. Have you ever seen an elephant pee? I believe I have, yeah. I saw it at, uh, what's that place? Wild World, and now it's Six Flags, right? They had elephant rides. It was better in the old days. It was so nice. Uh, Anyway, they put them to shame. (laughs) They have pumps in their heads also that pull moisture from the roots of trees, allowing them to feed for more than a decade underground. This is alien stuff, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. They are uh, rescuers of caterpillars. I don't know how they do that. And they are being ravaged. This is all true stuff, folks. Yeah. They're being ravaged by a sexually transmitted disease that turns them into zombies. Now, as far as peeing, they have a muscle that pushes the waste through a tiny hole like a jet, and the flow for their size is astronomical. Uh, Now, as far as the STD, there is a sexually transmitted disease. It's a fungus that turns cicadas into zombies and causes their private parts to fall off. I think I've got that. That's nasty. (laughs) Uh, It's a real problem that is even stranger than science fiction. Uh, This is a sexually transmitted zombie disease. The fungus is also the type that has a hallucinatory effect on birds that would eat the cicadas. So if the cicadas have this STD, the birds that eat the cicadas, which are all over the place, uh, start tripping. That's wild. Trippy. Uh, Trippy the bird. This white fungus takes over the male. Their gonads are torn from their body, and chalky spores are spread around to nearby other cicadas. The insects are sterilized, not killed, 
This way, the fungus uses the cicadas to spread to others. They're completely at the mercy of the fungus, and they're the walking dead. There they are. <laughs> now, you know what freaks me out just What's a little that? bit? Stop the music. What? This is, this is the run years ago where I and we know a guy that ate them by the handful. Raw. I mean, I've eaten them fried, but I've yeah, not I've eaten had them, them fried too. But I mean, I wonder if that kills the STD. I, don't I got know. I got cicada herpes all you over want, my bo- all my, over my body. I right just now. hope that it's a chance to have a return of one of my favorite visitors to the show, comedian Sid Cada. Sid Cada. Hey, what a great <laughs> audience you are, Sid Cada, right here, ladies and gentlemen. Glad to have you. I uh, I've just gotten over a uh, a bout with cicada gonorrhea. I actually dated her, too. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. I'm Cicada Gonorrhea. And this is... Uh, no, they don't want that And that's commercial. one to grow on. I'm going to separate it right now. Please one, do. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. Whether you hydrate to live or live to hydrate, I have already, because of the excitement of this show, torn through my Liquid IV peach-flavored, sugar-free today. Liquid IV peach is quenches... Great. I love peach. Peach is my fave. Uh, it quenches your thirst faster than water alone. Three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink, plus eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness. Liquid IV does it all in a single delicious stick. No sugar, no artificial sweeteners, non-GMO, and free from gluten, dairy, and soy. Try the white peach like I was telling you, green apple or lemon lime. Uh, They're all delicious, and you will uh, love it. I grab my Pizza Hut cup, and I'm off to the races. So good and so easy, however you hydrate. Grab your Liquid IV Hydration Multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco or get 20% off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code TMOS at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code TMOS at liquidiv.com. Want to talk a little baseball uh, right now before Rob gets to his list of the great foods. I love that when he uh, mentions that. I want to say that uh, this morning... Uh, my young guy and I uh, watched the highlights of the Red Sox A's game. Uh, Red Sox thumped them nine to nothing last night, and I believe uh, after a little baseball fandom dormancy, because of the fact that we went to two spring training games, and Michael's got a renewed interest in baseball, we're going to be uh, not going to. These highlights of the night before, especially when they're on the West Coast, right? it's the coolest thing in the world because you get it done in 15 minutes instead of sitting through two and a half hours, and you get to still root for your team, know all the players that are doing well, see how they're doing. Uh, Tanner Houck, who's a pitcher for the Red Sox, looks looked awesome last night. But it's not going to save the league, Mike. You can't. You know, play the games and then watch them the next day. Look, do you really think in your heart of hearts, and I know you're not a sports guy. No. But do you think in your heart of hearts that baseball is going to go away? It's not. Baseball is not going away. No, you're right. You're right. I don't think you're – look, all sports go through their periods of time when they're saying, oh, I don't know, I don't know. Baseball is going through a rough patch right now with fans. They're 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 out well, the there. The problem is football. Football's greedy. Football wants everything. They do. They want stealing. everything in the spring and the fall and the summer yeah. and everything and the thing Makes me and bitter. the zipple and the blue. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, going to a live baseball game is still a wonderful pastime. That's I why they it. called it the Great American Pastime. And each of the stadiums. Um, especially new stadiums, try to up the ante as far as concessions, which I think mm-hmm. is a great thing as well. Uh, I remember when I'm old enough to remember when uh, Camden Yards came into existence, and one of the biggest things about Camden Yards was the little walkway where they brought in all these local vendors from Boog's the Baltimore barbecue. area. Come on now, Boog's Barbecue's right next to the crab cake stand. Uh, but it's and cool. the Nationals uh, they upped the ante when they brought in uh, the half smokes. From, yep. uh, from Ben's uh, Chili Bowl. Ben's Chili Bowl. It was All amazing. Right. So what and, do you uh, have? Okay, this will be fun because I can also quiz you about the name of the corporate sponsors for each of the teams. Mm-hmm. Mike, who plays at T-Mobile Park? Damn it. Oh, damn it. Damn it. Damn it. I'll give you a hint. Okay, give me a hint. Way West Coast. Northern West Coast. It's either the San Francisco Giants. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Or the Oakland A's. The Seattle Mariners play at T-Mobile God Park. damn it, they just played them. The Red Sox just played them, and I looked at the hi- highlights, and that's why it was in my head, you moron. I should have known that. So what Mike, are they, you uh, should go to the game because they have a Dungeness Crab Pizza served with butter, dill, thyme, parmesan, and lemon. Well, okay. I think that if you 
if you go sans tomato sauce. Right. It's like a white pizza, I guess. It's a white pizza. Uh-huh. I'd, I'd certainly give it a shot. I'd give yeah. it a try. Sounds I don't know. <laughs> Something about ballpark crab meat. <laughs> yeah, but also pizza. You know, yeah. does everything have to be on a pizza? Are we that well, stupid that that's the only way? How about a nice uh, Dungeness crab salad sandwich? That'd be now, easy. Now, that, now you're in. talking. Now you're talking. Yeah, Mike, absolutely. who plays at Guaranteed Rate Field? Oh, boy. Guaranteed Rate Field. I'll give you a hint. This yeah. is uh, Middle America. Kansas City uh, Royals. I'm sorry. The Chicago White Sox play okay. at Guaranteed Rate Field. And what they have is a Ruben That used sub. to be Comiskey Park. Oh, that's right. Even I knew that. And by the way, when I miss the ones from the sponsors, I'll give you the old stadiums they played in. I'll be successful at that. Okay. Uh, You can get a a Reuben sub, and you can also get the home run, which is, I don't know, their version of a roast beef sandwich. But here's their signature. It is the Campfire Chocolate Shake, topped with whipped cream, graham cracker crumble, and toasted marshmallows, and served in a keepable souvenir cup. Okay. All right. And it's a shake. Yeah, All I've right. actually we had a we had a a chef on in the uh, terrestrial days, and he made a s'mores shake that was pretty amazing. That'll work for me. Yeah, and okay. uh, you know the ice cream confection when you're out at a ball game, I uh, I have trouble resisting that. That's a good one. All right. Oriole Park at Camden Yards, still the same name, so no quiz here. It used to be way back when Memorial Stadium. I got you there. Well, yeah, but it was not the same building. No, it was a different building. But oh, okay. I, see, I'm not. Re- I think Comiskey Park was a, an older park too. Oh, was it? Okay, I stand so, correct. I'm not sure. But what are they serving up at Camden Yards? This Mike year? New this year is the warehouse dog. Okay, that's all you need to say. <laughs> no, I got to tell you what's on it. Oh Jesus, here we it's go. It's a foot long hot dog topped with horseradish infused brick sauce, crispy onions and queso, all served up on a pretzel bun. God, that sounds like diarrhea before you get to the car. Yeah, you want to definitely have an aisle seat. All right, give me a couple more. <laughs> okay, Tropicana Field. Who plays there? The, the Tampa Bay Rays. Exactly. You can get the braised short rib nachos or the pretzel slugger dog, a foot-long hot dog wrapped in a soft pretzel. I know you were bemoaning pizza, but the pretzel bun seems to be the go-to this year. Are you? Where do you line up on the pretzel bun? I'm not a fan. I'd rather have uh, just a, a good, hearty- solid... Yeah, like, like a brioche bun. bun. Yeah, that's, yeah, I don't need that. Uh, Minute Maid Park, Mike. Who plays at Minute Maid Park? Oh, God. I know this. Damn it. I know this. Minute Maid Park. Minute Maid Park. Uh, it's, it's a California team. No. God damn it. It's orange juice. Why isn't it a California team? Minute Maid Park. Give me a hint. Down south, uh, middle of the country. Down south, middle of the country. Uh, if so that means it's either the Texas Rangers or the Houston Astros. Stop gonna, the Houston Astros because you won. Astros, thank yeah, you. Okay. All right. Two offerings from them, and I don't want one. I don't know. I why bet I it's good because it's a cool ballpark. It's a new ballpark. Mike, how about the pennant pickle dog? A foot long hot dog topped with jalapeno slaw, fried pickle chips, dill aioli, and green nah, onions. Nah, not trying hard enough. Okay, what opinion. about the curveball corn dog? Yeah, see, too many, too much with the hot dogs. Come Mini on. corn dogs topped with chili cheese, diced onions. Mm, I try that one. That sounds um, good. Yeah, you like got that. that cornbread factor. All right. One All right, more. Mike. Who plays at Chase Field? Give me a hint. Uh, the desert. The Arizona Diamondbacks. I'm sorry. Phoenix plays at Chase Field. Phoenix. That's what it says. Is it the Phoenix Diamondbacks now? Must be. Must be. Well, there's no other. Team, yeah, but you know what? In Arizona, that's what yeah, that's what they meant. They meant Arizona, I guess. I'm sorry. I you don't know. know. I have not. not I've been guy. away from baseball. Did they change something that I don't know of? Is that Mac? You got to look that up. Find out if it's still the Arizona Dim- Diamondbacks. Rob called them the Phoenix Diamondbacks. I know. I'm I not said sure it was whether you're Phoenix. wrong though. I'm not ready to dispute okay. it because I don't know myself. Well, Mike, we could do a field trip to find out and get an apple pie chimichanga which is a sweet dessert featuring vanilla frozen yogurt, caramel, whipped cream, strawberries, and the ballpark stable, Cracker Jacks. Oh, it is Arizona cool. Diamondbacks, by the way. It's okay, the thank you, Mac. Okay, All right, I very good. And let's close with this, Mike, because who knows? Maybe you'll get lucky and hit Fenway Park this year. Okay, now Fenway Park, for a long time, has maintained that uh, the clam chowder from Legal Seafoods right? is, a, is a staple. Uh, but Fenway ups the ante. What are they doing this year? Mike, you're going to be so proud. Irish nachos. <laughs> Irish nachos are uh are they do they put mashed potatoes on them? No, that's Irish guacamole. Okay. Uh, waffle fries, 
with corned beef, sauerkraut, Gross. sour cream, Thousand Island dressing, <laughs> and don't nasty. forget to top it with queso. That's nastiness. <laughs> that is bad. Boo, Fenway. Fenway. That's Boo. A- but by the way, the next time I go, I'm going to go out to the bleachers again. I'll never go to a game that's not in the bleachers. I had such a great time, and I want to take my kid up there again yeah. this summer. I want to. Go I bet if you go out to the bleachers, you'll see a pile of Irish nachos. Yeah, but uh, it's reused. <laughs> yes. It's recycled, Recycle? I should say. That's what I, I say. <laughs> uh, we will take a break, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, when we come back, uh, talk a little doggy companion with oh, you. Oh, okay. Because uh, I might be agreeing with my wife, but I'm not looking forward to it. Because I'm an elderly man. We'll be right back. Hey, are you ready to shed 26% of your weight? Let's go. Derm Glow Skin. Oh, it's the best. Uh, they're the ultimate destination for conquering your weight. All you have to do is click the weight loss button at dermglowskin.com. And then you take a quiz. And if you qualify on their website, you uh, will talk to an experienced doctor via text, via email. They will prescribe the right medication and your weight loss solution delivered beautifully packaged directly to your doorstep. So easy, right? A lot of people run around, Rob, and what they do is they try to find a doctor that can prescribe this. They deal with people that might not be 100% uh, secure on how to do it or what the system is. This is what they do right. if you link them through Carla's website, dermglowskin.com. I can't even stuff. imagine taking like, and it does take an afternoon or an entire morning to go to a doctor. In, and, and you go, sometimes and then they, they don't say, have the stocks. "Yeah, they say, well, yeah, but you know, we can't do it. So have a great day." And look, I like, did it before. Before I got on Dermglow uh, and went to dermglowskin.com and Chiral, which is the company that Carla reps for, mm-hmm. I have to tell you this: that I would go drive to the doctor's office. They had a little weight loss fatty fatty clinic right next door, mm-hmm. where every time I wanted to get the medication, I would get weighed. I would have my measurements take. It was, I'll be honest with you. It, it, look, it was the beginning of my journey, but it was a pain in the butt. Then, when Carla started doing this, I get it sent right to my house. And they they re-up you if how you need you it to it? be re-upped. And it comes right there, beautifully packaged, with the instructions on how to take the uh, medication. And they have it in stock. And it yeah. eliminates the delays. Uh, people are raving about it. Go to dermglowskin.com and lose weight now. If you've been struggling with it or you want to do it and do it quickly and easily, dermglowskin.com. Click the weight loss button and you are there we thank Beautiful. you during glow skin appreciate that um so as i told people and some of you because i haven't really dealt with it an awful lot might not be aware of the fact that uh we uh put uh frankie our beloved chihuahua uh to sleep a short time back and it and was it was, it was merciful because i saw him about a year ago he was and about then. a year ago. He was in he was in rough shape, mm-hmm. and I know it's a hard decision, but it's something you got to keep in mind when you take on a dog. Is that you know eventually you're going to have to be responsible for the end care. Well, it's- uh, Carlo over the last uh, month or so has been making noise about uh, another doggy companion. And is the noise like so. this? No, no, no. It's uh, but yesterday there was one thing because the uh, the dog was uh, the dog. We had a person come to the door. And uh, normally Winslow doesn't make weird sounds. but Wasn't quite like Sebastian. Oh, little boy. But he went nuts. And Uh I said, I've never heard him make a sound like that. And Carl said, well, as I told you, it's because he's bored. He's lonely and he's bored. You can speak to this because you've experienced one dog by themselves right. and multiple dogs. There's that pop again, right, Mac? I hear it every time. Yeah. Yeah. It's happening all day. Did you touch something, Rob? I didn't touch a thing. Might have been mine. When the ah, sound Mike's, Mike's fault. No, your fault because you sent me the that have clicks at both, both ends. Mac's fault because he's our engineer. Stop it, Mac. All right. I'm sorry. Uh, anywho. The, but yeah, now we've got Sebastian and Linus living in the house together. And they do better together, right? They're in better moods because there's it's another so dog in the house. Great, except at mealtime. Because Robert, I'm sorry, Robert, I told you this yesterday. I call Linus Robert and Robert Linus. Sad. Linus, I know. Sad. That's empty nest syndrome. 
uh, Linus is such an alpha and has been that way for a long time that if I am like eating or if the food is in the dish for them and he walks through and Sebastian's in the room, he'll just turn his head and go, Brar! just yeah. a warning to like, but to me, that's marvelously entertaining. They don't fight. It's and, just a warning. And they like each other's company. They, they, oh, they one do. dog likes having another dog in the house. A hundred percent. They sleep together and uh, they, we have an ottoman by our front window and there are times that they will both, and keep in mind, Sebastian's a big boy. Right. He's 120 pounds, 110 pounds. Mm -hmm. They'll get on the ottoman together and watch outside, and it's the cutest. So so I get it, and I don't disagree with my wife about this. Uh, do, right. Is it a pain in the ass to have two and stuff? Of course it is. It's, all, it's just double the hassle uh, yeah. as far as taking care of a pet, and you have to do it. And you know who eventually it's not going to be my kid or Carla. Not. It'll no. be, you know, it'll be Carla, my kid, and me taking care of the dog. So it's a... I, I'm fine. Get a but small. I, the only thing I'll say is get a small enough dog that you can walk them together. I'm not sure whether we're going to get a small dog this time. But I mean, you can go medium, like 40 pounds. Don't know even is, if that's going to be the case. It's really tough to walk these two together because they both want to go in their different places. So I got to walk them separate. The breeds that we are thinking about right now. Uh -huh. And uh, first of all, after if there's nothing in the shelter. Uh, that that you know that meets with our right. love factor. Uh, we might do. Uh, I'm a big fan of standard poodles. I love standard. That's a poodles. big. That's a big dog, though. That's a big dog. Uh, but at the same time, it's a smart dog. It's a dog that can handle any circumstance. And we might go. But like everything else, Rob, it's just you go online. Oh. And everybody just has you, their priority seems to be not the dogs, but the financial end of things where yeah. when did it become normal for dogs to be thousands of dollars? When did that happen where you sit there and you have, have two dogs no bang idea. in your backyard and I suddenly know. you're making eight ten thousand dollars it's I, I don't i, I don't know. get it because i mean even growing up for me and i'm a little younger than you it was you go to the you go to the pound or you know somebody or you would adopt a dog that someone doesn't want anymore and it's really a it's a handshake deal yeah but even the rescues are not cheap to get no they the, you, you think you see rescue oh yeah. i'm gonna rescue a dog but they yeah. still charge you a lot of money for uh the rescue so the journey begins and I'm not sure where it's going to end, but I have come to grips with the idea, yeah, I think for the dog, he's a young dog still. He's got a lot of energy and playing. But to me, the in the back of my mind, it's just a, more of a poop and pee experience that I can look forward to. <laughs> Perfect you know. world. Uh, white standard poodle, gray, black. What color would you go for? Black, uh, gray, probably not a white one. Uh, -huh. uh and uh they they have them they, they have them that are called i think they're super super uh bluish gray and they're called blues and uh -huh. they look really really cool i'd love to get that type of but my dad had them before uh when i was a baby and caddy named after cadillac mountain up in maine yeah yeah uh caddy would get on its hind legs and wheel me in my uh stroller when i was there and wow. uh, that's why that's why i hit my head so severely too <laughs> it's a terrible accident. I don't like to go into it. Well, it's uh, it's nice that he was able to replace the absentee father with a dog. Yeah. Go walk your brother. Yeah. Go ahead. My dad would just uh, sit down on the bench and smoke a cigarette while the dog was uh, rolling me around. So anyway, we'll see uh, Keep us what updated. happens. But it's all, you know. I want uh, you to get one of the bluish ones. Penny's puppies. And, uh, you know, with 15 paragraphs. Oh, and Penny's then... a bitch on wheels. She <laughs> should shut right. up. I don't know if it's even named Penny. Oh, That's Penny. the way that goes. So I'll oh, let you know. Penny, Penny, Penny. I'll, uh, I'll keep you right. Uh, Carla does not want a puppy, though. So that's going to make another thing more complicated with breeders because they normally have to give them to you right out of the litter. We'll see what happens. I will keep you posted. And if we can't find one, we're going to adopt Oscar. We'll be right back. <laughs> Classic Penny. Mm -hmm. Paragraphs and everything. Hey, uh, let's talk about our friends at Legacy Box. Yes. Just like us, you're going to love it. Spring cleaning is upon us. There's one meaningful box you don't throw away when you're scouring the attic. It's your box with all the photos, with the albums, perhaps with videotapes. And if you're really old like me, maybe some Super 8 stuff lying in there. Super. 
super stuff. You want to preserve it because otherwise it's going to turn to dust. Legacy Box makes it easy to preserve your past. You load your Legacy Box with your old tapes, your film, and your pictures, and you send it back. You'll get it back on a thumb drive or on the cloud. It's ready to watch, easy to share, very simple. It's like magic. Preserving your family's heritage is the only way to ensure your legacy is safe for generations. Join over 1 million families that have trusted Legacy Box. Don't wait. It's simple, affordable, and they take care of everything. Thanks to Legacy Box, all of our family's histories can live on with digital clarity and no degradation. That is nice. Nice. Your memories of uh, your spring cleaning to-do list with uh, Legacy Box, check, check it off. Your memories off. Your spring cleaning what? Check off your memory box. What is it? Check the memory oh, box off. I didn't read that right part. Yeah. Check protecting your me- Rewrite that for me. I have you trouble it. with it. Check protecting your memories off your spring cleaning to-do list. Sorry, with Legacy Box. Visit LegacyBox.com slash TMOS to shop their $9 tape sale. That's LegacyBox.com slash TMOS to unlock this incredible offer, people. Hello. There she is. The flip side. Julia, who left the house yesterday to go back to Richmond without saying goodbye because she assumed I was busy. So I called. I went upstairs to say hi. House was empty. She wasn't even here. But uh, She split. She split, Daddy-o. Um, All right. If you were running for president, don't you think you'd want to be at your best? Uh, absolutely. Well, Who wouldn't? Uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Uh, has got some, uh, he's got some strange ideas of how he wants to do as president. But yesterday, he just sounded great. I think maybe we should vote for it. The greatest threat in democracy is not somebody who questions election returns, but a president of the United States who used the power of his office to force the social media companies, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, to open a portal and give access to that portal to the FBI, to the CIA, to the IRS. He was, this was a planned interview on Aaron Burnett, and he shows up talking with that voice? Well, he has his medical condition that re- results in him speaking that way, and it sounds like that was combined with his hoarse voice yeah. for probably doing too many too interviews. Many things. Like, these candidates always lose their voice because they're out on the uh, campaign trail. It's a grind for anybody. It's stunning to me that we have two guys uh, that are well over 70 mm. and Joe Biden over 80 that can get out there and uh, do what they do, even though, uh, you know, I like one guy better than the other. But that's his deal. What concerns me about him is I believe he is off the charts when it comes to the wingnut factor. Oh, absolutely. I really do. Yeah, remember worries the, me a little remember bit. Remember the ad he ran during the Super Bowl, which was a repurposed yes. Very odd. from the 60s? Strange. Very, very strange. Conspiracy guy, yeah. I think. Yeah. Mike, yeah. this is sad. Uh, have you ever gambled at the Tropicana in Vegas? I've gambled at the Tropicana in Atlantic City uh, multiple times. I think the Tropicana was my very first jackpot. I won $250 in a quarter slot Very machine. cool. And it was started to happen. Well, uh, after 67 years, the Trop, she has closed today. I hear that the Hotel Tropicana is quite comfortable. So mentioned in a James Bond movie, but hey, baby. it'll be demolished in October. And what they're going to put in its place is the stadium for the Las Vegas A's. All right, so, it's going to be great for, uh, you know, uh, sad for Oakland and, uh, you know, great for Vegas. Oakland's taking all your, uh, you know, teams and kicking them out and they're going to but Vegas. But 67 people. years is a pretty good run for a casino. I, I can't I can't imagine it keep, It kept up with its competitors. Love the Trop. Love the name, the Tropicana. Great name. Great I would, it's, a, it's a great casino, great orange. I think we were going to have that cat at Tropicana, weren't we? Yes, Cat twenty uh, twenty six. I, I know you had to make. You're scrambling right now. Do you have a venue? I don't for twenty six uh, for Cat no, twenty twenty six. The State Theater will not return my calls. No, uh, Rob's looking at a lot of different places, and uh, you know, Bismarck, uh, North Dakota, huge, huge. Is it South Dakota or North Dakota? It doesn't matter. Forget. I've sent emails no. to both, and uh, yeah. also Red Rocks. We want to try Red to do Rocks. It there. That would be a that would be a plead in your case. Thank you, uh, Mike. You've been yes. you're in Florida. Have you ever done the airboat <laughs> airboat tour of the Everglades? I have done one. Here's what I didn't like about okay. it. Okay, I did one, a popular one. It was down near Everglades City. 
and they had almost like a theme park ride where there was a limited amount of land. There's proprietary land down sure, in the glades. Sure. There is. I like the ones that have a wider swath where you really go out and explore, but I've never done one like that. I've only done the place where it was kind of controlled and you saw the other airboats. Yeah. That was a drag. I did I one like where really the directions were, they included turn left at the tree. It was <laughs> really back there. If you go, it's so wild and it's so uh, I recommend completely it. open. I would do it in a heartbeat. It's a fun thing to do when you come down. But it's not so good. One of the things you want to see, and we did, you want to see alligators. Because that's yeah, what you got there to are do. big. And so if the airboat is flying and sees an alligator and misses it, he turns around. But you may want to just slow down, lest your airboat overturn. All of a sudden, the captain uh, wanted to make a U-turn sort of on the water so we could get a better picture of the crocodile. And the boat just flipped, flipped on its side. And we're all in the water. And we're all screaming because the alligator is right there. This doesn't happen often. We said, let's do this. You know, and I uh, took a day off even from work. Maybe I should have stayed at work. Yeah, I guess you might want to stay at work. Man, and all the swamp griblies, like snakes and things now, like that. Now, there are parts Nasty. of the Everglades that you can get in, and it's not all gribbly. It's actually, I have a picture of myself up to my waist. And it's very cool to get in the water. But I wouldn't do it if there was an alligator or a crocodile right there. That's why they call you Cotton Mouth Speedway. That's right. I've still got a little bit of algae under my nails. And, Mike, let's close with this. Uh, Snoop Dogg, this is a valid question. He has been high, but what's the highest he's ever been? Snoop, what was the most stoned you've ever been in your whole life? With Willie Nelson. <laughs> we was in Amsterdam on 420, so we went back to his hotel room, and we was playing dominoes. So <laughs> Willie had a vape, a joint, I had a blunt, and he had a pipe. And I'm just getting higher and higher and higher, and he just keep passing it to me. And I'm like, trying to stop, but I can't, because I don't want to show no signs of weakness. <laughs> Fifteen minutes into the session, I, suggest, I say, Willie... <laughs> Hey, man, let's get something to eat, man. And we go to Kentucky Fried Chicken, right? And when they bring the chicken from the drive-thru, they give it to us, and me and Willie both put our hands in the bucket at the same time. And we grab the same piece of chicken, Tom, and I look at Willie and I say, it's yours, cuz. <laughs> it's yours, cuz. I love Snoop. That's awesome. All right, we'll be back uh, tomorrow with a brand new episode as the move is complete. And uh, hey, Mac. Yes, Mike. I want those videos tomorrow. Is there a chance we can get them? I'll try. Matt, it, the proper answer is yep. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that went well. Yes, That's wonderful. Uh, so and Oscar will be Spiewak. totally refreshed tomorrow. Uh, I doubt it. All right. Uh, that's uh, for Oscar Santana and Rob Spiewak. This is Mike O'Mara saying so long, everybody. Ciao. ciao. Want more? Make sure you check out the Mike O'Mara Bonus Show. Get it at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Do you ever have Egg McMuffin? Sometimes, Dad, or cheese pranes. Can you say Egg McMuffin? Egg McMuffin, yeah. I got nowhere else to go! 